Welcome back for another episode of RBP. I'm Ross Bolin here with your co-host, Jared Borislow. J-Bone, how are you? I'm doing well today. I just had a uh, gyro. A what? A gyro. G-Y-R-O. Some people call it a gyro. Some people call it a hero. I believe the Greek pronunciation is gyro. Really? Uh-huh. I think so. I'm pretty sure. There's just, just, the G is silent. Do you call it a gyro? Like in lasagna. That's the G's move in silence. To famously reference Lil Wayne. This is going to be a hip-hop heavy episode, Jared. Wait, what do you say, though? G-Y-R-O. I have honestly avoided it my whole life. I've n- intentionally never gone to a place that serves, I guess I would have gone with gyro, but I've heard hero. But it almost, it's, it's not pronounced the same way like superhero. There's like a slight something different on there, some stank. When they say it, whenever I think of a hero, I think of like a hero sandwich like Homer Simpson would eat that's like seven feet long and it's just like a sub. I think of, and they say that a hero will save us. I'm not going to stand here and wait. I think of, I need a hero. A hero save me. The end yeah, of I think the there's night. an Enrique Iglesias one too, but you know what? Frankly, we've done enough. There goes my hero. Damn, there's a lot. Foo <laughs> Fighters? Okay. Okay. Heroes. Heavily written about in music. We could be heroes. David Bowie. Wow. Just for a day. Wow. Everybody wants to be a hero, Jared. And uh, you want to ask me how I'm doing? No. Well, I'm highly concerned. Okay. And this is not a bit. This is not a joke. We're starting the show with perhaps the most serious segment we've ever done. I am highly concerned that Kanye West has been kidnapped. Okay. I believe that Kanye West has been kidnapped by Jay Prince at the behest of Larry Hoover Jr., at the behest of Larry Hoover, Hoover Sr., who is currently incarcerated. Is that Big Meech? No. I wish it was. That would make a lot of the other rap references that you and I don't understand a lot easier. We'd be then, you know, we'd be learning a lot today. I thought that's what that Rick Ross song was. I thought it was like, they call me Big Meech. Larry Hoover, like they're the same person. I think he just means that they call him both of those things. But See? in reality, if I had to guess, I don't think anybody calls him either of those things. But Big Meech <laughs> is Demetrius Edward Big Meech Flinnery from the Black Mafia family, who we're going to discuss today, Larry Hoover, not Big Meech. Is Larry Hoover the vacuum family? Also not the famous Hoover vacuum family. See, I'm so lost. Um, unfortunately, this is, this is a different... Hoover Dynasty, more in the crime realm than the household cleaning uh, realm. So yesterday, Kanye West released, I guess his name is Ye now, excuse me. Ye released a video on Instagram of him at an art installation in Houston, Texas, that I have actually been to and inside of. It's the Rothko Chapel. It's, It's a chapel. It's a small chapel, but it's also art. Like, you sit in it. You're not allowed to speak, first of all. There's not supposed to be talking in there. It is public. Anyone can go in. You're not supposed to speak, so it's like a silent place for meditating. Some people go and they write or journal. It's a ma- I mean, I don't, I, I'm not exaggerating. When you walk in, it's a magical place. Really, really cool place. Um, and in the video, Kanye is standing next to Jay Prince. There's a third party filming. Okay? I'll explain who Jay Prince is later. Kanye reads this statement that I'm about to read you very clearly from his iPhone, okay? He's not at all trying to hide that this is scripted. I will do my best to mimic his tone as I read. All right, straight up, he's holding his iPhone, standing next to a man named Jay Prince. This is Ye and Jay Prince. I'm making this video to address the ongoing back and forth between myself and Drake. Both me and Drake have taken shots at each other. And it's time to put it to rest. I'm asking Drake on December 7th to join me on stage as a special guest to share the two biggest albums of the year live in Los Angeles, with the ultimate purpose being to free Larry Hoover. I believe this event will not only bring awareness to our cause, but prove to people everywhere how much more we can accomplish when we lay our pride to the side and come together. Beautiful. And Jay Prince closes out the video... By saying, beautiful. Do you think they were supposed to cut that out? Yes. Someone should have cut that out. And to me, it indicated that this was not take one. (laughs) This was take two. And um, to explain, 
Larry Hoover is the co-founder of the Chicago street gang, Gangster Disciples. First of all, tight name. So is Black Mafia. Hoover is currently serving six life sentences at the ADX Florence Prison in Florence. He was found guilty of ordering a killing in 1973 and sentenced to serve life in prison. In 1997, however, Hoover received another six life sentences, six additional life sentences after he was found guilty on multiple counts of continued gang activity while in prison. Essentially, he was accused of continuing to run the gangster disciples from the can as mafia bosses and gangster leaders have been known to do. Now, to complicate matters even further, on one of the tracks on Donda, the man now named Ye's most recent album, Larry Hoover's son, Larry Hoover Jr., is given an outrageous amount of talk time to thank Ye for writing on behalf of his father in Donald Trump's Oval Office. The man standing next to Kanye in the video, Jay Prince, is the CEO of the Houston-based record label Rap-A-Lot. Rap-A-Lot Records, of which Scarface has spent most of his career as a part of. Scarface, a past guest on our podcast, otherwise known as Brad Jordan. Um, now, Jay Prince is best known as the person who originally introduced Drake to Lil Wayne and helped him get signed to Young Money Entertainment in 2009. But the thing that people nationally do not understand about Jay Prince is that he carries with him a level of street respect that uh, it cannot be overstated. You do not play with that man's name. I don't know why. I don't know how he came to be as uh, powerful as he is in the hip-hop community, but he's also the person who shut down the past Kanye, uh, the, the Drake and Pusha T beef when it escalated. You'll remember famously Pusha T outed Drake as having a son that he had not publicly acknowledged. Turns out with a former porn star. Not that that really matters one way or the other. The point is that beef escalated. It got to a point where apparently Drake was going to say things that were going to permanently destroy the career of multiple people at the highest level of the industry, including Kanye West. Jay Prince had to step in and shut this entire thing down. The beef was deaded instantly. It was over. Then it came back when both of them needed to promote their new albums, Donda and Certified Lover Boy, respectively, two of the most poorly named albums in the history of music. And now he's standing next to Kanye in this video, Jay Prince, and... It, long story short, I think Larry Hoover is still on a power trip in prison and is using his son, Larry Hoover Jr., through his relationship with Jay Prince, CEO of rap -Lot, to influence Kanye to agree to do a concert with Drake with the entire thing's purpose to be freeing Larry Hoover from prison. So, okay, that's a lot to digest. Yeah. What is the reasoning behind why Larry Hoover should be released. He wants to be, rele be released. And as his son says in the minute plus of talk time he gets on Donda, his father has not been doing or calling any shots from within the penitentiary and will not call any shots afterward. And his argument is that if he was even remotely suspicious that his father might go back to that lifestyle, that, he would be, that his father would be dead to him. That's what he says on the track. Now, that's what I would say if my dad was in prison, too, regardless of the circumstances. So it makes it pretty difficult to judge. And now, with this new phase of the story, when you put the pieces together, it just, it looks like, optically, that is what is happening. I mean, the, the, <laughs> he, look at Kanye in the video. This is not a man that is happy to be reading what he is reading. People trying to enter the public exhibit where they had their meeting at the Rothko Chapel were turned away by armed guards. 
Does that sound like a normal situation to you, J-Bone? I feel like, though, that Kanye probably has armed guards around him at all times. He he even dresses himself as if he, he is an armed he guard. He doesn't. But that's a th- this dude has just been wandering the world since the release of the album, basically, and the divorce stuff, going to stuff in Europe, and he's by himself for the most part, wandering he, around in a fucking mask. Yeah. Dressed like a, a magician from the future. I mean... It, but it just, it just, look, I'm just speculating here, but it, it really seems like Jay Prince showed up to Kanye's house and was like, motherfucker, you're coming with me. And he was like, what? And he was like, get in the car. And Kanye was like, okay. And he dragged his ass to the Rothko chapel, <laughs> kicked everybody else out, put armed guards around it, sat him down. And explain to him, I have a statement on my phone here. And you're going to read this statement while this guy here films you. And then I'm going to put that statement on your Instagram. Okay? And he went, fuck. (laughs) And then I went, you're not supposed to talk in here. You were there. Yeah, I was in the corner. I'm so white that I blended into the side of the wall. But, uh, But no, seriously, that's what it seems like happened. So I don't know that that's actually what happened. I have no idea. Kanye, if that's not what happened, sir, as somebody who routinely has to read things into a camera, hey, run through it a few times, man. Run through it a few times and then film, you know, or like, the, the, you know, get a get 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 somebody beside whoever was handling the iPhone in this situation to do it next time. It's like the first time you get your mom to take a group pic of you and your friends and you realize, "Oh, my mom is the worst photographer in the history of photography because she's a boomer." So, you don't ever give her the phone again. That's what needs to happen with whoever did this because they failed to edit out the beautiful at the end and um they should have gone again at least once more. And this was currently take 2. You think they could have afforded a teleprompter situation? I- anything but whatever this was. This this was awkward. Why was and concerning? Why was Jay Prince even in the, in the frame? He didn't say anything besides beautiful. The only thing he said kind of made it the, is the only reason why I'm like, oh, this is weird. The the only reason I'm speculating any of this is because he's in the video standing next to him intimidatingly, and then he says what he says, beautiful. And it's not even like, it's kind of like an ironic beautiful. It's like, you got through it. It's, it. Obviously, anybody watching this knows that was terrible. It was kind of like, that's what I wanted. Yeah. To me. Yeah. Here's a crazier thing. I went to high school with Jay Prince's son. Jay Prince Jr. That's like being named Al Capone Jr., basically, in Houston. And uh, from all accounts, nice guy. Dominated the parking lot. Had an outrageous sound system. I think he had like four 12s in the trunk of his Impala that was on 22-inch spinners that somehow also had spokes. Those giant pokers that you oh, see yeah. coming off the Houston cars. Like the things that look like wacky racers. This like dude. Snively Whiplash is driving around that thing. This dude was getting domed up in his Impala. Just constantly, I imagine. <laughs> I imagine. Probably. You wouldn't know. Anyway, really weird. Really weird stuff from uh, Kanye, and we'll have more more on Kanye in, in just a few seconds here. Today's episode is also brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs, making the most comfortable shorts in the world with the built-in underwear you know and love for living life and making love. love. It's like, why wear shorts with underwear when you can wear even better shorts with built-in underwear, thus creating less laundry, saving the planet, thus making you a hero. Yeah. Can I blow your mind? Who is also better looking and more comfortable. Yes, please do. So, Bird Dog Shorts. I have many pairs. Many, many. I wear them most days of the week, and I prefer the built-in liner, right? So some, do I. Some people don't. I think, you know, it's, it's their right, but I think they're missing out on what makes Bird Dogs truly, truly, truly incredible. I agree. Think about it this way. They have built-in underwear, right? Technically, because they have built-in underwear, they then also have built-in outerwear. The pants are the built-in outerwear. The underwear is the built-in underwear. It's all built in. All of it. And they make pants, like you said. My joggers, my girlfriend said my ass was popping. <clears throat> that ass, it does look P-H-A-T fat. It's a problem. In these bird dogs joggers. I mean, 
it's confusing for me. I won't lie. As a guy who loves butts, you know, for you to be throwing that thing around in your bird dogs joggers, it kind of does make me we're a little co-workers, uncomfortable. Just so you know, we're not. Lovers. I know, and in a, in a workplace, it, it's it's inappropriate. And I don't even know. We may have to ban bird dogs joggers from your body in the office place anyway, because I can't stand being this H all the time, and I'm sick and tired of getting bonked. Jared, the newest pair of bird dog shorts I got. Seemingly higher quality and more comfortable than before. I don't even know if that's actually true, but it, it, it's insane because they've always been very well made and obviously super comfy. But I'm telling you, folks, the joggers, the new joggers, and their other pants are phenomenal too. They've got pants you can wear out as like slacks to dinner or to work or whatever. No one's gonna know. They look great, but they're much, much more more comfortable than like whatever the fuck you buy from wherever the fuck you shop. And <laughs> where do people buy pants? BirdDogs.com using the code RBP. And what's more, Jared, when you use the code RBP at checkout on BirdDogs.com, you'll get a free whistling football with your order. There's one directly behind Jared's head right now. It's beautiful. It's like the Nerf football you grew up with and loved, except it's a Bird Dogs whistling football. And when you throw it through the air, it whistles and it said Bird Dogs on the side and it's orange. It's hey, tight. I'm going to try to make it whistle. Ready? Oh, you just look like you're furiously masturbating it, <laughs> which is... Again, arousing. So please stop, bonk. Birddogs.com, code RBP. When you order the most comfortable pants or shorts in the world or joggers built in, built out, who cares? Code RBP and you'll get the free whistling football with your order as well. Birddogs.com. Use code RBP today to support the podcast. Let them know we sent you and uh, get your free whistling football. And other yay-related news. Mm -hmm. Months ago, the day the Donda Stim player dropped, I ordered one. Well, it arrived yesterday, and you may be asking yourself, what is a stem player? Jared, take it away. Tell the people what a stem player is. I've asked Ross this question uh, probably like once a week for the last three months when he goes, oh, my stem player comes in. Yesterday, he goes, hey, the stem player is out front. Uh, can you bring it inside? I go, what's a stem player? What is it? I don't know. It's a, it plays stems? What is it? A, a stem bowl? Do you smoke stem bowls out of it where it's just the stems? You smoke stems? There's one right behind me, and I still don't know what a stem player is. I don't even know which of the things behind you is a stem is a stem player. I'm looking at everything behind you. What does it mean? Okay, so look, when Kanye dropped Donda, the album, he puts he puts out this thing that's called the Donda Stem Player, and it comes preloaded with the full album. Okay, and he actually uploaded a bunch of extra tracks and shit in the Andre 3000 track that Drake initially leaked is now in the stem player. It's the first track that plays, which is just to tie this all together. It's ridiculous. But it looked like some kind of little MP3 player, right? But with some sort of DJ-esque features. That's all I could decipher from the website. Now, being the media mogul that I am, I decided we had to make an investment for our company, and I spent $226 to order one. And it arrived a few months later, <laughs> several months later, uh, Supply and, chain issues. And I opened it, and uh, I doubt very much that those were to blame in this case. Um, uh, what I'll say is, it's it, look, <laughs> it comes with instructions, which I am holding in my hand. And there are there are too many things you could. This is this is it's a goddamn instrument. I don't have time to learn the clarinet or the piano, and I certainly don't have time to learn the stem player. But you do have to hand it to Kanye here. That, that is what he has done. He has invented an instrument, for real. Like a tech instrument that's also a music player, DJ machine. Wiki Wiki West, I, I, I don't know. But Isn't it by Yeezy Tech? <laughs> yes, it says by Yeezy Tech, YZY Tech, but also Kano, K-A-N-O, not the bad guy from Mortal Kombat. Do you think that... I'm assuming, though, safely, right? Now, we're thinking Yeezy Tech means this is like a subsidiary product of Yeezy Technology, potentially a brand. Yeah, what if Yeezy Tech is a college? Go Yeezy Tech! Then Elon will make a stupid joke about it and ruin it for all of us. Oh, okay, what, what's the mascot of Yeezy Tech? It's Kanye in that bear costume from the first three albums. Go Bears. Go Bears. Kanye Bears. <laughs> teddy Bears. He was a teddy bear. But yeah, the, the, the addition of Kano makes me think that this whole thing is horse shit. Yes, he's trying to launch some tech subsidiary, but the fact that he had to include another company, I think they did it. And it's like, you know how they give executive producer credits to the actor, Leo, every time he's in a movie now, he gets an EP credit because he's that big. I think it's that. 
if I had to guess. And as I said on Instagram, I've made some dumbass purchases in my life. As an example, I'm currently wearing a Houston Rockets short-sleeved t-shirt that is also a hoodie. So somebody had the best comment of all time earlier today. <laughs> Ross, turn yourself that, turn that way. Turn your whole body that way real quick, like to your left. No, other way, other way, other way. Your, that's your right, okay. From this angle, when I see it, you look like you're wearing a hot dog costume. Put the hoodie on, put the hoodie on. <laughs> the way it's colored, when you, when you turn to your left, it looks like the bun is on the right and you're the hot dog. <laughs> and even so, the stem player may take the cake. <laughs> Like, I currently look like a mid-level McDonald's exec trying to look hip at a corporate retreat in his McDonald's tea hoodie. You look like Jonah Hill in, that, in the other movie about the fake college. Ask me about my wiener. <laughs> Stim player, though, the stupidest thing I've ever bought. So check it out in the background of our TikTok videos and Instagram reels and such on the shelf because that cost me $226 for you to look at it. Hope it's nice. <laughs> Are you ever going to use it? Yeah, I'm going to try to learn some of the little, I mean, but let's be honest, I, I jacked with it for about 10 minutes and I was like, this is, this would take a substantial amount of time to master. Now, I, I bet you there are already like sick YouTube clips of kids who have got this thing down. It's like one of those, flick it, twist it, bop it. It looks like one of those. And I bet you kids have got it down to the point where they're making sick ass remixes. And you can also upload any audio to it and then basically use it as a DJ dildo that it's like it looks like a sex toy in some ways is stem supposed to stand for science technology engineering and mathematics I really hope not those are the four disciplines you study at easy tech I think it stands for stimulation like the sexual stimulation you're supposed to get from it because it actually does vibrate too I thought it was stem it's confusing stem but you can play, pause, change stem volume, next track, then there's another volume button, okay. Isolate stem, don't know what that means. Instant loop, I've had fun with that. The only thing you have to do is hold down the middle button, and so I understand that. It, it just makes, whenever you press the middle button, it makes whatever happened right before that happen over and over. In any song you want. What a joy. Well, now what's confusing is one of the songs on the album Donda is already an infinite loop of somebody saying Donda. 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 Yeah, you can do some really goofy shit with that one. And uh, then you can add effects and change the loop length and do, and then you can move the loop and change the speed and direction. And, and the point is that I, I will never be able to figure out how to actually make that work properly. So uh, my I, I give it a C plus. It's tight. I bet psycho kids can figure out how to do cool shit with it i am too old and busy yeah thus concludes my donda stem player review thank you for your service you're welcome you too you hope to pay for it oh great <laughs> <laughs> no let's uh seriously though let's pay for it this episode of rbp is also brought to you by talkspace the easiest and most effective way for you to get positive growth going in your life today when you're at a low point you might feel alone but over 50% of Americans struggle with their mental health. And as I always say on Twitter, on the show, you are not alone. We talk to our friends when we're experiencing issues, but they don't always give the advice we need. And it can be hard to open up to friends and family. We don't want to burden the people around us. At least that's how we feel. Obviously, that's not how it actually is. But for those of us who struggle with this facet of life, it can be easier to just suppress our emotions and hide our feelings and let things build until we break. Don't do that. Do therapy instead. Talkspace therapists give you the support you need to feel your best. They have thousands of licensed therapists trained in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and more. Your therapist can help you set and achieve your goals. You're going to be amazed at how much progress you make each week that you attend therapy. I have been in therapy personally for over a decade now. It is a huge part of my life. I still go twice monthly. And uh, I, I can't say enough about the benefits of having sort of an unbiased third party that is trained in the specialty of helping you pretty much guide yourself through life. That's what therapy has been in my experience. Talkspace is a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy. Instead of waiting for an appointment, you can send unlimited messages to your therapist 24-7 and they'll engage with you daily, five days a week. The positive effects of therapy will create lasting change in all areas of your life, your relationships, your career, and your overall happiness. And a therapist can help you identify the habits and patterns that might be holding you back 
and figure out a way to move forward in the right direction. So start feeling better with a single message today. Match with a licensed therapist when you go to Talkspace.com and get $100 off your first month with the promo code RBP. That is $100 off your first month when you use code RBP at Talkspace.com. T-A-L-K space dot com. Jared. Mm Mm-hmm. As if the news and events surrounding Travis Scott's Astroworld Festival couldn't get any worse, he has dragged our beloved Dave and Busters into the mix from XXL Magazine. New details are emerging in connection to Travis Scott's Astroworld Festival. This time, the rapper was reportedly out at gaming restaurant Dave and Busters for an after party following the mass casualty event which I think is probably the worst sentence in, the, in Travis Scott's career so far. I don't, like, l- love Dave & Buster's. Totally understand how it's a great place for, for the working man like you and I. Why is Travis Scott having an after party to his biggest event of the year at a Dave & Buster's? Apparently it was thrown by Drake. That's, see, that makes there be even more questions. <laughs> I mean, it's... Like, Houston famously has strip clubs that almost ruined James Harden's life. He had to escape to Brooklyn. Do, they went to Dave & Buster's? I, they're the richest and most famous rap... Have you seen Drake's house? It'd be like if Dave & Buster's continued to develop for 2,000 more years and became the most powerful corporation in the world. And then they made a location that was just for balling. That's Drake's house. It's fucking incredible. Why would you ever even leave that place? Much less to go to a... It makes no sense, Jared, that they're at Dave & Buster's at all. Like, rent out a nice restaurant, even an event space, like a nice wedding venue. Like, that's a good place for an after party when you're a rich Drake or... Travis Scott. I fucking love Dave and Buster's. I just, both of these dudes have been rich and famous for many, many years. I figured they would have knocked this phase of their career out early on. This would have been one of the first things I did. You and I might do this one day. This, that's what I mean. This is on some normal guy shit. This is like an episode of Dave. You right? and I could call up the Dave and Buster's in Austin right now and go, we want to reserve this whole fucking thing. How much is it? And I bet it's like three grand. And we could do it. Like, that's not a fucking crazy, extravagant rapper thing to be able to pull off. I could see there being an episode of the TV show Dave where Dave Bird, Lil Nicky, has an after party for one of his big concerts at a Dave Buster's and he gets flamed in, like, all of the rap media for it. Yes, that is something that I could see. Not Drake hosts Astroworld after party for Travis Scott and friends at local Dave and Buster's. Following mass casualty event. Following mass casualty event, which... The fact that Dave and Buster's survived the pandemic at all is a miracle of God. No, because remember, as I told you, I invested and bought Play, their stock. Oh, yeah. I bought Play stock at the peak of the pandemic, as people said, no, no, (laughs) do the opposite of what you think you should do. (laughs) And so I bought it. As if that wasn't enough. Now, these, these rappers have dragged... The beloved Dave and Buster's into a mass mass casualty event. They don't want their brand listed in the same sentence as mass mass casualty event. That's not a thing you want when your whole brand is that you operate a facility where you want people to gather in mass and have fun and have fun. This can only be bad for my Dave and Buster's stock. <laughs> it's not good for play. It's not. Okay. According to a report from TMZ on Tuesday, November 9th, Travis supposedly went to Dave & Buster's for an after party following the Astroworld Festival. The Cactus Jack founder was reportedly unaware of the mass casualty event that occurred and ended with eight deaths, dozens of hospitalizations, and numerous injuries. A source told XXL, Travis didn't know the severity of the situation when he arrived at the party. As far as timing, this remains consistent with the fact that no one, including the police, had publicly confirmed the gravity of the events that had taken place. Drake, who threw the after party, also wasn't aware of the tragic events that had taken place at the show either. A source told the gossip outlet that Drizzy didn't know there were attendees who had lost their lives due to the crowd surge. Travis Scott has also issued refunds to attendees of Astroworld, announced that he is covering funeral costs for the deceased concert goers, and is helping to provide resources for those seeking mental health services. I will say, 
since we last recorded, on top of finding out that this doofus uh, dragged Dave and Busters into a mass casualty event, I uh, also watched his apology video. And again, I have to question how that's the product you ended up with when you're one of the richest and most famous entertainers in the world. Kanye is reading from his iPhone while being held at gunpoint. (laughs) And Travis Scott is recording his own apology video on a fucking Instagram in one take, mostly with his eyes closed. Obviously, the, the problem is if people can tell you're attempting to look distressed, they immediately believe you're not distressed at all and therefore you are an asshole. And that's the only thing his video accomplished, which is not good. And he, the Jenner, his fucking girlfriend, baby mama, current pregnant girlfriend, I, don't, I think they just had another kid or they're having another kid. I don't know. There was pictures again. They do pictures every time somebody gets pregnant in America. If you're listening in another country and you're like, what? If you get, pre- if you get somebody pregnant, you got to take pictures with them. You got to take a shit ton of pictures of you in a meadow or a forest. Or with a green screen, which we can maybe provide at Bowling Media as a service at some point. But the Jenner family, the Kardashians, are the greatest marketers in the entire world. I mean, they're up there. With the Trumps and the Portnoys and the other, you know, model American citizens that are great at marketing. And Mike Lindell, <laughs> my pillow guy. Heroes, Jared. The theme of this episode. And you're telling me this is the apology he put out? It was just kind of, it was on it was unbelievably not sufficient is how I would describe his attempted apology video. So it just keeps getting worse. The story just keeps getting worse and it's like I I I am amazed at the lack of I guess it shouldn't be that shocking though because he had if you look, you got to realize this was the most meteoric rise that I've seen a musician have. He went from like performing for 10 people in Houston and mostly getting made fun of to one of the most famous artists in the world in almost a heartbeat because of Kanye. Next thing you know, he's literally impregnating one of the most famous and wealthy women in the world in the form of Kendall Jenner. Kylie Jenner, excuse me. One of the Jenners. Bruce. (laughs) Kylie Jenner. That would put you in a position where if you live that lifestyle over time, you would become pretty disconnected from reality. Would you agree, Jared? Mm -hmm. I think, similarly to other A-list celebrities we have discussed as of late, the fame monster got this dude. That's the only way to explain how you end up at a D&B after an M and mass casualty of it. MCE. D&B after MCE. Mass casualty event. Is that is that the name of the episode? I don't know if anybody's gonna click on that, man. <laughs> Apple suppresses the shit out of the podcast title Mass Casualty. Just DMB after yeah. MCE. <sighs> I'm glad he's doing stuff to financially help the people who are affected, but I, I as I said in our last episode, I wish him well in his attempted recovery as a human. As a real human, I do. As far as his brand goes, insert dumpster fire gif. Today's episode of RBP is also brought to you by MyBookie. MyBookie.ag. MyBookie. Your bookie. Everybody's bookie, baby. More is always better. That's why MyBookie instantly doubles all first-time deposits with double the funds. You can double your action and, more importantly, double your wins. They've got all the sports betting lines you could possibly need. For the NBA season, the ongoing NFL season, college basketball, college football, all the current sports. If you're a sports better, you can do that at mybookie.ag and support the podcast at the same time, doubling your action, doubling your money when you deposit, and doubling your wins. So, getting in on the action has never been easier. Just use promo code RBP to get started. The best part is you can bet with all your favorite currencies, including crypto. And with all that extra scratch, why not get in on the biggest matchups of the week at mybookie.ag? We're inching closer to the NFL, excuse me, playoffs with pivotal games this weekend, including a showdown between divisional rivals and the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Los Angeles Rams. 
behind MVP candidate Matt Stafford. The Rams are looking to continue rolling as they take on the fierce 49er defense. The Rams are legit. That sounds bet weird. Bet them to cover. You want, you want to bet the Rams to cover? At my bookie. MVP candidate Matt Stafford just sounds weird to me. Yeah, it's been a really weird season so far. The NFL is the weirdest league out of all the professional sports leagues to me. It's the one where there is, I can anticipate what is going to happen the least successfully. Long term. Game to game, it's fun to bet on. Long term, I can't pick futures for shit. Like, if you told me Matt Stafford was going to be an MVP candidate, I would have laughed you out of the podcast studio, and yet here we sit. If you had told me back in 2012 that Matt Stafford would be an MVP candidate in 2021... What would you have said? Oppa Gangnam Style. Don't wait. Head to my bookie today. Redeem your double deposit bonus. Get in on the game. Start winning now. Get yourself started by using the promo code RBP to receive double your first deposit instantly. That's promo code RBP to support the podcast. Double your funds. Double your winnings. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with mybookie.ag. Stipulations apply. And now... Ross Boland's Animal of the Week. Okay, this is absolutely an Animal of the Week combined with an insane headline of the day. So I'm going to start you with the headline. Penis rots after cobra bit man while on the toilet in South Africa. This is such a fear of mine. Toilet snakes. Okay, you always hear about that being a fear of people's, like, or at least, you know, every time somebody's introduced that as a fear of theirs, I'm like, you're an idiot. I, no, now, I'm reasonable. Now, I'm not sure I will ever enjoy a good shit again. So I'm not worried about toilet snakes in my general uh, haunts of toilets, the ones I use on a daily basis. But if I'm like at an Airbnb out in like the hill country, or golf if I'm, course, bro. I mean, golf course, they, that's Jared, one time I opened the bathroom door on a golf course in Austin, and a snake fell from the other side of the door and landed at my feet. I am not fucking with you. I'm Come not on. I'm not joking at all. That's terrifying. I shut the door, walked off, and pissed in the woods. So there's a video I, I saw. On... I'd already shit in my pants, so I didn't need to go poo anymore. <laughs> there was a video I saw of a, a snake coiled up inside of the water cooler at a golf course. So if you had gone to get water out of the water cooler, you know how there's like usually like a wooden holder around it? It was inside there. Fuck so. that, dude. Uh, See, now we so, can't go golfing ever again. So I am scared of toilet snakes in unfamiliar toilets. Uh, I, I like to believe I keep a nice environment around me on my daily basis to, to not have them, but yeah, scared. Well, let's see what the circumstances were for this guy. A 47-year-old Dutch man has suffered from a rotting penis after a cobra bit his genitals while he sat on the toilet during a safari trip in South Africa. So yeah, I'm not sitting... sounds like where you would get that. I'm not sitting down on a toilet in South Africa without doing a massive inspection. Exactly. I, I agree with you. I'm, I, I, frankly, I don't think I'm sitting down on a toilet in South Africa if I'm on a safari, period. Yeah, like, I'm probably standing on top of the seat and squatting and pooping into it. Yeah, I'm squatting uh, with my back to another person who's squatting, and I've got dual AK-47s, one in each hand, and that's how I'm shitting if I'm on a safari in South Africa. You could get got by any number of animals, including toilet... Toilet snakes. Toilet snakes. Turns out. The New York, po New York Post, excuse me, reports, via urology case reports... <laughs> okay, that's a sentence. The New York Post reports, via urology case reports, which contains extremely graphic photos of genitalia. <laughs> that's what it says. The man suffered from scrotal necrosis after he was bit by the cobra. Urology case reports said that this could be the first ever case of, quote, snouted cobra envenomation of the genitals, end quote. And that is one of the things you want to avoid that I have known since I was a young boy. You know, they say certain things, you know, don't talk to strangers, don't ever get in a van just because a man has candy, and don't ever get snouted cobra envenomation of the genitals. Yeah. I, That's the STD they didn't teach you about in fucking college, Jared. I can't picture... <sighs> Here's the thing. Wear a metal condom all the time. Yes. It's a, a chastity a, belt a, for a man. You need it, a ball condom as well. I think this has just been invented by us right now live on the show. This is not some written joke. You've, you've seen the film uh, Princess Bride. You're aware of what a chastity belt is. <laughs> or not. Google chastity <laughs> belt if you haven't. I know what a chastity belt is. This is that for men. It's a suit of armor for your dick and balls. 
Brought to you by Manscaped. Coming soon. We're going to pitch them on the idea. They're a sponsor of the show. We're going to see if we can get them to make this for us. Because that's clearly what we as men need at this point if we're going to be dealing with snouted cobra envenomation of the genitals. So the, the animal of the week is this cobra that made this man's penis rot? Well, I mean, I, I, like the story is just so miserable that it's more fun if it starts with that fun tune. <laughs> But it took three hours before he could be flown to the nearest hospital, approximately 220 miles away, which is like, I think the main deterrent for me, safari-wise, I really want to go on a safari. I want to see, I love animals, and I want to see them out in their natural habitat, not being fucked with by the humans at a distance or whatever, a safe distance with a guide that's appreciative and respective and has never been into any weird, shady activity in South Africa, and the whole thing is keeping me completely clean of any type of cancellation that could occur. That's the kind of safari I want to go on. But I do not want to be in a situation where it takes three hours to be flown 220 miles to the nearest hospital after a cobra bites my fucking Johnson just because I needed to take a shit. Quote, his penis and scrotum were noted to be swollen, deep purple in color, and painful on hospital admission. That's a Thursday for me. Back to it. Scrotal necrosis was diagnosed. What the hell is that? Necrosis is death of the cells. The cells are dying. Dead dick. <laughs> I mean, like, I've been told that. dead dick. I've been told I had a dead dick, but, like, this guy's so dick I. is literally dead. But this is actually it. Like, like <laughs> bluechew.com. Let's bring up another code. sponsor. Let's just throw them all in here today. <laughs> code RVP. Get that thing back up. Um, oh, my God. But, yeah, so it was uh, scrotal necrosis was diagnosed. I think we might have to name the episode that. And he received multiple doses of a nonspecific snake venom antiserum and broad-spectrum antibiotics. So, okay. I don't even know what the animal of the week is. Is that what you're telling me? A nonspecific... It just any old cobra? They were like, we don't know which kind of cobra it was. Give them the non-specific one. What mm -hmm. is that? They put all of the cobra shit together and stir it up? Like, oh God, I wish I... Sometimes I just wish I was a scientist, you know, so I knew more, so I could answer these questions for you, Jared, really. I, well, I didn't ask it, but... But just for you, I know you really, really, really want to know more about... What's it called? Scrotal, ne necro scrotal, scrotal necrosis. necrosis. Yeah, it, means it means your balls are dying. Dead... Testies. Dead, dead balls. Dead balls. Isn't dead ball? Isn't that like a thing in football? Like dead ball. Oh no, in ba baseball. The, the, the umpire it's sticks a thing in football, baseball, basketball. But in baseball, the umpire sticks his hands up in the air to let you know that you have dead balls. I imagine the doctors. They walk into the room and just stick their hands up and like dead balls. But there's like a dead ball foul in basketball, right? Like if the ball is not in play and uh, Nikola Jokic goes and fucking <laughs> knocks you out, that's a dead ball foul. Oh. By the way, that was completely deserved. Yeah. Seriously. You, you can't hit somebody and then get mad when they hit you back. It's the stupidest fucking thing ever. What? The Jokic brothers are coming for that ass. <laughs> Those dudes are fucking terrifying. One of them has literally committed assault or been accused of committing assault and strangling a woman. Like It's not great. They look horrifying. I want absolutely nothing to do with them. The Miami Heat are insane, and they need to stop that. Also, but also just because the general problem from the get-go, fundamentally, bro... Morris brothers struck first. It's that's the thing about Jokic is like I for, I even forget that he was the MB, he's the reigning MVP. I know he gets that no was, respect. He gets no respect. Also, he had the worst MVP speech in the history of MVP speeches. And again, if that's LeBron and Morris hits him, and then LeBron destroys Morris, nobody gives a shit. <laughs> nobody cares. But it's Jokic, so everybody's just like, "Who? Fuck that guy! Let's go fight him and his dipshit brother who strangled a woman." That's not a good idea. These people do not play. Okay? I've seen movies about the Russian mafia. You've seen movies That's about... That's not where Jokic is even from, but it doesn't matter. Well, you know he's from Serbia. You've seen Serbian films. I've seen Serbian films. I've also seen Air Force One. Those were Serbian terrorists. Get off my plane. I've had Ford. it with these mother-stinking terrorists on this monkey-sniffing plane. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> Why can't you say motherfucking? That's I, I'm, that was. Remember, have you not seen the the censored version? Oh yeah, it was monkey sniffing snakes on this Monday to Friday plane. On this Monday to Friday <laughs> plane, that was it. Yeah, <laughs> Monday to Friday plane. That was the worst dubbed over version of a curse word I've ever seen in in television movie history. 
them airing that on whatever NBC Monday to Friday plane. Snakes on a plane. Man, that was... That relates to the story. Snakes in the toilet. There were lots of snakes on the plane, though. Everybody died. Do you think there were snakes on the in the toilet on the plane? Spoiler alert. And there for sure were. I think there was a scrotal necrosis situation on this on the on in that movie. On the Monday to Friday plane. On the Monday to Friday plane. <laughs> Here's another quote. Do we need another quote? Yeah. Yeah, I have to read this. <laughs> the scrotal necrosis was reported to involve the entire fascia. Quote, skin to internal spermatic, end quote. And was excised. I have exercised the demons. Was excised with extensive margins. Primary closure was performed, leaving a drain in situ. Uh, the thing fades out. The defect in the penile shaft was treated by superficial debridement and a vacuum assisted closure pump. After nine days, the patient was repatriated to the Netherlands. He had a vacuum assisted closure pump? That's not my bag, baby. <laughs> One book, vacuum assisted <laughs> closure pumps, and me. This sort of thing is my bag, baby. <laughs> Signed, Austin Powers. Yeah, you don't want a vacuum assisted closure pump anywhere near your penis. That's another thing they taught me as a young boy. Avoid those at all costs. Among the symptoms he reported following the Cobra attack included vomiting, burning sensations, and a shooting pain throughout his body stemming from his groin. Yeah, you mean where he was bit? And also, out of all those, I think the worst thing is that his fucking testicles literally were murdered. They're dead. <laughs> the man has since made a full recovery. What? And a plastic surgeon performed a, quote, penile shaft debridement with extensive resection of dead tissue extending into the corpus spongiosum to the fold of the preputium. <laughs> the fuck does any of that even? Those well, are made up words. You it's have got, them. Oh, fake dick. That's what it is. The comments from the authors of the report added, quote, always flush the toilet before sitting down in countries notorious for their snake population. Hey, here's a question for you, Jared. Which countries are not notorious for their snake population? Canada. Alaska. No, that's not a country. That's not. Uh, I don't think Europe has a lot of snakes. Russia. I want to say I haven't heard much about Russian snakes, but they also don't disseminate a lot of news about their animals. I mean, Australia. Australia is a terrible snake country. South I feel Africa, like North Korea is just crawling with snakes. I think they're too far north. They're like they're like right, they're like north of a lot of Russia. You don't feel like other countries though? Maybe like bundle up a bunch of their snakes in boxes, load them on a cargo planes, drive them over North Korea, and just drop all their snakes <laughs> in there. Because like, what's Kim gonna do? You know? They need they need a uh, Pied Piper. Kells, the Pied Piper of R and B. No, I think not, he's currently incarcerated as well. I, I mean, <laughs> you don't see anybody trying to free him. I mean, the snake one. Who's he going to send to stand next to Ye in his video? Was the Pie Piper the guy who played the snake, snakes out of Ireland? No, that's wrong. St. Patrick? I am aware of St. Patrick's Day, the holiday. Was he the one who took the snakes out of Ireland? Part of me looks like I know I, I quit drinking four years ago. <laughs> Why do you have to? Nobody looks into Irish history unless they're drunk or Irish. <laughs> <laughs> I am neither. I'm not even anything cool, dude. I got boring. one of those uh, genetic DNA tests back several years ago. My dad got us one for Christmas. I'm nothing cool. It sucks. I'm just a bunch of random white countries mixed together. Scotland and fucking... Didn't get Ireland. Not sure what that's about. Scotland? What's Boland? I was honestly bummed. Scottish. Oh. William. First name. William. Wallace. Middle name. Big dick. I went to high school with a descendant of William Wallace. I went to high school with the descendant of Jay Prince. <laughs> Wait, did you really, though? Yeah. You yeah. know he didn't do all that dope shit they put in the movie, right? Well. Just, well, there's also people who say Jesus didn't do all the dope shit that Mel Gibson put in that other movie. <laughs> who do we believe? I disagree. I'm going to just trust Mel Gibson on this and say that they both happened. I trust Jim Caviezel over the whole lot. Uh, you blanket trust Jim Caviezel? Blanket trust on QAnon God, Jim J Caviezel. JFK Jr. He's in, Q Jesus. Let, let's have Caviezel and JFK Jr. 2024. Do we have any QAnon listeners still, or have I upset all of you enough to leave? Because at there's this no point, way. if there's one of you here still, it'd be a fucking miracle. But if, but they have to be a self-aware QAnon listener who I kind of That's fuck not with. a thing. I would but, fuck with them. But that isn't a thing. That's the part about it. You cannot be a QAnon person and be self-aware. 
You but, have to be completely lacking in self-awareness to even achieve Q. But maybe our podcast has created the first... They, they like, understand how dumb they are, but they're like, you know what, just in case, I'm going to keep believing it. What the we, fuck do I know? I'm a hot dog. <laughs> like, admit, if your left arm also had the exact pattern your right arm had, this is a hot dog outfit. I think it might be... Any, the only thing keeping it from just being a hot dog <laughs> is this patch that says rockets. Like, if it didn't say rockets on it, it would just be a hot dog. Like, everybody that saw me wearing it would go, damn, that dude fucking loves the aesthetic of hot dogs. <laughs> you can't wear the, hat, the hoodie. You have to take the hoodie down. You know what's funny? Okay. <laughs> not a joke. Not a joke. When I'm standing in the Mitchell and Ness store in the, in the uh, fucking Toyota Center, I'm, I'm looking at this thing going, no, dude. <laughs> you fucking idiot. This looks like a, like a hot dog or a McDonald's <laughs> outfit. Like, don't do it. Don't do it. But I couldn't help myself because it's a t-shirt with a hoodie. And I love the Rockets. And I bought it. And then I put it on when I got home and I looked in the mirror. And I, and I actually put a video on Instagram. But I was like, I, I have somehow talked myself completely into this. And even as I sit here fully acknowledging that I look like either a woke McDonald's executive a, 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 a currently attempting to look cool in front of his uh, subordinates at a corporate retreat or a hot dog, I still think this is dope. I don't know why. For the picture, for all the featured image, I need you to turn Just, sideways. No, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do full hot dog for you. It's gonna but, be amazing. But my thing is this: I think it needs to be turned sideways so it, so people assume the bun is on the. You I, can't I disagree let, with you. I think you're overthinking. Oh, it. you're no, a classic no. overthinker. No, 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 this, this is you know this. About it would be you. way more hot doggy if you did not. If you let but people, then you're losing the shape. You're losing the shape. No, you just turn your head sideways. Uh, th this these chairs aren't conducive to that. N nobody wants to hear this, Jared. But if you want to hear more of me and Jared, we'll be back on Friday, ad-free, as we are every Friday on Patreon.com slash Ross Bolin Podcast, R-O-S-S-B-O-L-E-N Podcast, Patreon.com slash Ross Bolin Podcast for ad-free, exclusive, additional episodes every week. Uh, that's where you go. You support the show with a minimum pledge of $5. There's another tier, the Enforcer tier, that's $10. The OG tier is $100. You can pledge whatever you want, though, no matter the tier you're in. You get to pick your amount. If you didn't know that, you can do a customized pledge. But a $5 minimum pledge to support the podcast and Bolin Media as Jared and I continue to grow the show and our company and uh, Formula Bone and Oysters, Clams, and Cockles and Banging the Can and everything else that we do. We're going to need more and more manpower and woman power to help us with that. So uh, If you're upset, they are like, oh my god, this is the last episode of RVP till next week. It's actually not if you're on Patreon.com slash Ross Bolin Podcast, where we put out a new, never-before-heard episode, only heard on Patreon episode, every Friday, and we've been doing that for, like, years. So if you're caught up on RVP, if you're like, oh my god, I'm so caught up, you're actually not, because there's like a hundred episodes you've never listened to, so you're not actually a real fan. So go now to Patreon.com slash Ross Bolin Podcast, and uh, if we hit 1,200 subscribers on Patreon this week. I'll let Jared make a 10-minute video of me giving you a, an instructional, informative walkthrough of the Donda Stim player. Wow. We already have our house, uh, the Bolin Media Content House tour scheduled mm -hmm. for at some point this month. We're going to try to get to it so that uh, y'all can have that on Patreon as well because Jared promised after we hit a certain amount of YouTube subscribers, we would do that. So, so we're gonna, subscribe to us on yeah, YouTube also. You get to see the full... The full Bolin Media content house, for those of you who want to see that, it'll be on Patreon yeah. as well. So, so something you'll see in the house tour, like if you're right now, if you're watching on YouTube or a clip, uh, what you can't see is right here directly to my left is Jay Prince. He's just standing there making sure that I do a good podcast. Yeah, so he's actually been here this whole time. This entire episode uh, has been recorded under duress and Jared and I did not get to write any of the jokes or any of the things that we just said, so... Hopefully it was good. That was mostly rap a lot. We we didn't have much to do with it, um, and hopefully we will be back on Friday. I don't really know if he's gonna let us leave. Frankly, we'll find out soon though. I'm gonna go learn how to play this stem player. You stay safe out there. Beautiful. <laughs>